Welcome to the final chunk of this really long uh, class. In this chunk, we're going to look at some alternative way of creating your sound. We're going to look at the sculpture a little bit. We're going to look at uh, EXS24. And we are also going to take a closer look at the Evoque 20 that I already explained a little bit, but that was more on the sidechain input rather than what it actually does. So I already loaded um, an audio file and it's not the guy who's seeing faces anymore. It's Ooh, won't you give me the beat back? Ooh, won't you give me the beat back? Ooh. It's this guy. You're you're gonna hate it in, in a few minutes as well. Uh, and uh, I already loaded my Evoque 20. Uh, this is the uh, default preset. All right. Let's go ahead, mute, select. This guy over here as a sidechain input, you should already know how to do that. And signal over here, right now we are on synth, so we can play, if I select the right channel, we can play our synth signal. Analog would be Ooh, won't you give me the beat back? Ooh. The clean audio file that we are uh, using as a sidechain input. Uh, and Voc is, of course, vocoder, and it's not going to play anything unless we uh, play something. Okay, over here is our synthesizer parameter and controllers, so um, attack really fast and release fast as well, so we can have a better control in the voice. <laughs> So everything is really snappy. Uh, I like it a little better. Uh, it's, it, it makes the voice a little bit more clear. Then we kind of know this part already a little bit, and I explained this one as well. This basically acts um, kind of like a compressor. It basically sets the way that our vocoder reacts to the transient of our audio file. Uh, in, if the attack is really fast, it's going to be really responsive to the transient, so the voice is going to be a little bit more clear. Um, same with the release. If we lift the release up, the voice is going to be a little bit more spacey. It sounds a bit, a little bit more, a little bit too robotic if it's too short, uh, because it would get all the different transient of the voice and you know react to that. <laughs> All right, this part over here basically selects which frequencies uh, our uh, evoc is going to react to. In this case, it's reacting from 75 hertz till uh, 800. And in this case, uh, I what I like to do is get rid of a little bit of the frequencies right here because there's a lot of muddiness and if we go around here, it's gonna make it easier for us to hear what um, what the guy is saying. It's basically cleaning up uh, the spectrum a little bit. The bends over here uh, are gonna control how accurate our um, evoke is reacting to our uh, voice. So the more bends we have and the more accurate and clear the voice will sound, the, the worlds will, will, will be. And if we decrease and go to five, the voice is gonna be a little bit more confused. <laughs> Basically, the quality is not as good, and it's a little bit harder to understand what the what the words are. Format shift basically is gonna get our frequencies, and it's gonna shift them either up or down. This way, we can have some kind of a pitch uh, effect on the voice. It's gonna sound a little tiny uh, and pitched up over here, like a chipmunk or more kind of a scary if it's going down here. Let's let's try. Uh, 
All right, format stretch is basically going to get all the frequencies that we have and either stretch them in a wider um, range of frequencies or narrowing them down and basically have a thinner type of uh, effect. And resonance is basically going to resonate those frequencies. Kind of makes it a little bit more like a, a demon or something like that. Okay, over here we have the UV detection, uh, which means unvoiced and voice detection. What does it mean? Well, uh, the human voice produces unvoiced and voiced sound. Um, voice sound are basically all the sound that we produce by uh, vibrating our vocal cords. Uh, kind of works like an oscillator. Um, the unvoiced sounds are the one that usually are done by the tongue or the lips. For example, the S, the S sound or the P sound. That's an unvoiced sound. What UV detection does is basically um, detecting this type of sound and science, the synthesizer can recreate unvoiced sound, basically is going to replace our unvoiced sound with either noise or noise plus synthesis. Then blend over here, it's going to take the actual voice and simply stack it over. And the level, of course, is going to create, uh, it, it's going to control uh, how loud uh, the voice is. Well, if we set it to noise, the unvoiced part of our file basically will be replaced with simple noise. And this sets the sensitivity that our evoc has to the unvoiced uh, portion of the file. Cool, now that we know uh, all of these parameters, what we can do is select synth, and uh, here we set it to off, and we can simply go on and design our favorite sound or find something interesting. Uh, once again, this works pretty much as all the synthesizers that we've seen so far. Um, all of these are wavetables. Why, uh, why do they give us wavetable? Because basically we can create more harmonic and complex type of sound that work really well uh, with the voice when we, uh, when we process it. Of course, we have two oscillator, oscillator number one, oscillator number two and both have different, have all the same waves. And then over here we can control the semitones. And this is a little silly bug. Then over here we have detune. This already sounds like a voice. And you know, once you found the sound that you like, I mean, it's not that I like this one, but it already sounds like a like a voice, um, a voicey sound. So um, I'm really curious to hear how it reacts with the voice. Mm -hmm. 
It sounds pretty cool. Then from there, uh, we can we can decide to uh, go to FM synthesis, and that's of course gonna give us um, way more complex type of sound. And I already explained it, but the way it works, um, wave one, which is uh, our carrier in this case, it's only gonna play a sine wave, so it doesn't matter which uh, wave we select, it's always gonna be a sine wave. And uh, wave two is our modulator, and this is the amount of modulation. And of course the ratio, it's gonna create all the side frequencies, We can get this really rich in harmonic type of sounds, and it sounds like this on the voice. What I like on the FM synthesis with this synthesizer, um, with the Evoque 20, is that when you are at a low ratio. You can get this really robotic kind of sound. Maybe let's set it to noise. We can also add a little bit of noise. You know, it's 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 a lot of fun. I could actually stay here and, and play with it for you know the rest of the day, um, but. Uh, yeah, once you once you got the the, the sound that you like, uh, all you have to do, and um, this is a little bit of a pain in logic, uh, and I already explained it, is um, laying down uh, your notes. So let's uh, record them. Uh, I had the loop set to a little bit too short. And there you go, this is how vocoder works. Um, also, it doesn't necessarily has to be um, used on a voice. We can get um, old drums. No, I just want electronic drums. We can get a drum machine like this and we can use the vocoder on the drum machine. And uh, that's really handy and can do uh, some really interesting stuff. Uh, especially if you like root it through some delay and reverbs.
so that you have the sound bouncing around and let's try with a delay And yeah, it's just a lot, a lot of fun. And remember, it's not just for voice. You can run basically every audio file that you want. And as you can, as you can hear, you can create some really nice and inter interesting stuff. And it's actually really useful. Uh, I mean, this uh, this synthesizer is really underrated. I said it uh, already, but um, I'll say it again. But as you can see, as you can hear. Um, it can create some really nice, uh, really rich inharmonic and really interesting uh, stuff. So, so yeah, always keep it in mind. Um, once again, remember, set it over here as vocoder and sidechain input. It's gonna have to be uh, your audio file. Then you just play the notes that you want and it's just gonna work. And that's it for the vocoder. And since we, um, mention wavetable here. Let's just go and look at those a little bit better. <laughs> 